In this video, I am going to solve this question. Let x denote the amount of time a book on 2 hour reserve is actually checked out and suppose the CDF is this. In part A, we have to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. So in part A, we have to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. We know that f of x is the cumulative distribution function and it is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to x. So to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 1, we have to calculate f of 1. So f of 1 is equal to x square divided by 4 because this is the value of f of x for values of x between 0 and 2. So it is equal to x square divided by 4 given that x is equal to 1. That's what we have put here. So this means that this is equal to 1 divided by 4 and this is equal to 0 0.25. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 1 is 0 0.25. Let's move to part B. In part B, we have to find the probability that x is between 0 0.5, I mean x is greater than or equal to 0 0.5 and less than or equal to 1. So this is the probability that we have to find. We know that x is a continuous random variable and for continuous random variable, we have this proposition. So for continuous random variables, probability that a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b is equal to f of b minus f of a. So this is the proposition that we have for continuous random variables. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 0 0.5 and less than or equal to 1 is equal to f of 1 minus f of 0 0.5 and we know that f of x is equal to x square divided by 4 for values of x between 0 and 2. So this will become 1 square divided by 4 minus 0 0.5 square divided by 4 and solving this we get 0 0.1875. So this is the answer to part B. Let's now move to part C. In part C, we have to calculate the probability that x is greater than 1.5. Well, we can use the complement rule to calculate this probability. So we can write that this probability is equal to 1 minus probability that x is less than or equal to 1.5 and this probability is equal to f of 1.5. We are given that f of x is equal to x square divided by 4 for values of x between 0 and 2. So we can write 1 minus 1.5 square divided by 4 and this is equal to 0 0.4375. So this is the probability that x is greater than 1.5. Let's move to part D. In part D, we have to calculate the median checkout duration that is mu tilde. We know that the probability to the left of median is 0 0.5 and the probability to the right of median is also 0 0.5. So basically to calculate the median checkout duration, we have to calculate a number such that this holds. So we have to calculate the value of mu tilde such that f of mu tilde is equal to 0 0.5. This means that the probability that x is less than or equal to mu tilde is equal to 0 0.5. So this is how we calculate median. So we know that the cumulative distribution function is x square by 4. So f of mu tilde will be equal to mu tilde square divided by 4 and we are given this value as 0 0.5. So this implies that mu tilde whole square is equal to 2 
and this implies that mu tilde is equal to under root of 2. Note that I have not taken mu tilde as minus of under root of 2 and this is because x can take values between 0 and 2. Okay, and under root of 2 we know is equal to 1.4142. So, the probability that x is less than or equal to 1.4142 is equal to 0 0.5. And this is the median checkout duration. Now, let's move to part E. In part E, we have to differentiate the cumulative distribution function to obtain the density function f of x. So, we know that for values of x between 0 and 2, f of x is equal to x square divided by 4. So, differentiating this, we get f prime x which is equal to f of x is equal to 2x divided by 4 and this is equal to x divided by 2. So, for values of x between 0 and 2, the probability density function is equal to x divided by 2. Now, we are given that for values of x greater than or equal to 2, f of x is equal to 1. So, for values of x greater than or equal to 2, f prime x will be equal to 0 because 1 is a constant and when we differentiate a constant, we get 0. So, using this, we can write that the probability density function that is f of x is equal to x divided by 2 for values of x between 0 and 2 and it is equal to 0 otherwise. Let's move to part f. In part f, we have to calculate the expected value of x. We know that expected value of x is equal to integration of x multiplied by f of x from minus infinity to infinity. And in this case, this is equal to integration of x multiplied by x divided by 2 as this is our probability density function and we know that x takes values between 0 and 2 so we can write 0 and 2 here and dx here. So in this case expected value of x is equal to this. So we can take 1 by 2 outside as it is a constant and this is equal to x square dx. Integrating this we get 1 by 2 multiplied by x cube divided by 3 and we have 0 and 2 here and this is equal to 1 divided by 2 2 cube which is equal to 8 divided by 3 minus 0 so this is equal to 8 divided by 6 and this is equal to 1.33 so the expected value of x is equal to 1.33 now let's move to the next part. In part G, we have to calculate the variance of x and the standard deviation of x. We know that variance of x can be written as expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square. We have already calculated the expected value of x. It is equal to 1.33. So, let us now calculate the expected value of x square to be able to calculate the variance of x. We know that expected value of x square is equal to integration of x square multiplied by f of x dx from minus infinity to infinity. And in this question, it is equal to integration of x square multiplied by x divided by 2 as this is the probability density function dx from 0 to 2. This is equal to 1 divided by 2 integration of x cube from 0 to 2 and this is equal to 1 divided by 2 x raised to the power 4 divided by 4 and we have 0 and 2 here. This is equal to 16 divided by 4 and this is equal to 2. So, the expected value of x square is equal to 2.
we know that variance of x is equal to expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square. So this is equal to 2 minus 1.33 whole square and this is equal to 0 0.222. So the variance of x is equal to 0 0.222. So now we have got that variance of x is equal to 0 0.222. So that means the standard deviation of x which is equal to under root of variance of x is equal to under root of 0 0.222 and this is equal to 0 0.471. So the standard deviation of x is equal to 0 0.471. Let's move to the next part now. If the borrower is charged an amount h of x is equal to x square when checkout duration is x, compute the expected charge. So that means we have to calculate this expected value of h of x. Well, we know that expected value of h of x is equal to integration of h of x multiplied by f of x dx from minus infinity to infinity and in this question it is equal to integration of x square multiplied by f of x dx from 0 to 2. We know that f of x is equal to x divided by 2 and we can take 1 by 2 outside so it is equal to 1 by 2 integration of x cube dx from 0 to 2. Solving this we get 1 divided by 2 x raised to the power 4 divided by 4 and we have 0 and 2 here and this is equal to 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 16 divided by 4. So the expected value of h of x is equal to 2. So this is all for this question.